All right, welcome back to the beanbag. Today we are looking at the Playmates figures for Star Trek Deep Space Nine, as well as a few customs that I've made uh, for main characters. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of extra characters in the Deep Space Nine uniform, and I will show you those in one of the follow-up videos after we get through Deep Space Nine and Voyager's main characters. Um, so, obviously, first is the first Cisco figure, the Commander Cisco figure. Uh, very, very basic, very good sculpt. Um, this is how he looked for seasons one and two. Uh, of course, in season three, he grew a goatee, and then in season four, he was able to finally shave his head. Actually, it was at the very end of season three, wasn't it, when he shaved his head? I can't quite remember. Um, which they did make that figure as well. Which the funny thing about that one is that technically it was a Chakotay body that they used and just made a new head sculpt of now Captain Sisko to put on there. Uh, and this is actually something I mentioned in one of my previous videos. On these early figures, they were still sculpting the pips on their collar so that they had to paint them. But on this one, you see, if you, you, know, if you don't catch the light right, looks like there's nothing on his collar. But if you get the light to shine just right, you can see where they have just simply painted the pips onto his collar there. Uh, which, to be honest, I actually like the just painting them on a little bit better. Yeah, you don't get the effect of the of the shadow on them as well, but it also makes it easier for uh, customizers. Because if we're trying to use this particular figure to make an ensign or a lieutenant, we don't have to sit and shave those off. Um, next is obviously going to have to be Major Kira. Uh, so this is the uniform that she wore for the first three seasons. I think it was in season four that they changed up her uniform. And then they changed it up like 20 more times before the end of the series. Uh, including a maternity version. Or at least it were two different maternity versions. There was slightly skinny and then very pregnant version of her. But anyways... Uh, they only ever made one, and this is it, uh, which it still works really well, and customizers can use this one to do quite a bit as it is. Uh, I did like the, I always liked the fact that Bajoran officers had their uh, comm badge and ranks flipped from what Starfleet had. And uh, the idea, the suggestion, because you know, the reason that they said that they put the comm badge over the left is because that's where humans typically identify where their heart is. That kind of makes a suggestion that Bajoran's heart is sort of on the right side instead of on the left. Uh, I always have thought that was kind of amusing. But anyways, so after that is uh, Dax. Um, this is a great one, and I, I this was one of the first figures that they ever made that had a ponytail, um, which was great. Although a few people do occasionally have problems with the uh, the glue that they used coming loose and it popping out. It's kind of the uh, the Jordy visor issue of it coming loose. But I've always loved how detailed that they managed because customizers still have a hard time getting that level of detail. I mean, obviously, that was some kind of machine print because you can see up near the forehead where it just suddenly cuts off. But it's still, it's still a great little amount of detail there that I really like. Um, and then next, whoop, before I drop him, is uh, Dr. Bashir. The... It, it was hilarious. I was actually recently watching... 
uh, Alexander Siddig, he, over the last year during COVID, has done a lot on his YouTube channel, and including uh, allowing fans to come on, and they get to ask him questions and stuff like that. And he was uh, talking with, uh, he also has done a few interviews with some of his co-stars uh, and that kind of thing. And he was talking about a piece of art that a fan had done for him. And how difficult it was for them to draw him. Because honestly, he has two, especially when he was younger, now that he's older, his He's got very defined features now, but when he was younger, his face was kind of generic looking. Um, which, for, cus- for, the cu- for those of us who do custom figures, that's a great thing because we can use this face for just about any old guy. Uh, but he also talked about the fact that his torso is very short. Like, unusually short. And I'd never really noticed it before. And they actually did reflect that a little bit in the figure. uh, That his torso is actually kind of short. Now, one thing that's kind of funny is that a lot of people don't realize the arms on this figure are actually borrowed from the Lieutenant Barkley figure. If If you've got a Lieutenant Barkley figure and you pull it out, you will notice that it's basically they just took, and instead of being black on the shoulders and the color on the sleeves... It's the color on the shoulder and black on the sleeves. But the hands are the exact same. That they can stand with their hands put together like this for some reason. Uh, But, and I've actually been suspicious that maybe the legs are also from the Lieutenant Barkley. And all that they made original was that torso section and the head. Uh, So next we've got Odo. Which, this is one of the ones that I realize it is a tiny difference. Because, see, this is what he wore through the first two seasons, basically. And then in the third season, he got a box collar. That he then, he kept that for the remainder of the show. And for about, I think it was about five or six episodes, he had a belt. And I know the story on that is that when they were starting season three back up is uh, Rene Abergenois had actually asked for a collar and a belt because he, he thought it would make it his outfit look a little bit more like uh, a little bit more formal looking. And then after just a couple of episodes, somebody mentioned that the belt made him look like Buck Rogers. And that's when he was like, I think I'm going to stop wearing it. Um, so, It's one of those things that customizers, a lot of times we have to uh, make a version of Odo with the collar in order to have him look like he did from season three on. But we can get away without ever making the belt because, like I said, that was only in a handful of episodes. And that was it. Um, Next is Chief O'Brien, which was the first figure to have rolled up sleeves first character really to do that uh, i always like the fact that call was talking he talked about the fact that when he started doing the show that one of the things he hated was how uncomfortable that the sleeves of the uniforms during next generation the whole uniform of next generation was but he convinced the costume designers to make his costume specifically so that he could roll up the sleeves um basically so it would help him stay a little bit cooler throughout the day and it gave his character definitely a more diverse look whenever you kind of see him in the background doing things uh do love this sculpt the and one of the things that people don't really appreciate about some of these is the the wrinkles that they actually get on these chat on these uniforms look so good and the hair is always fantastic on these um, and then the last officer is Worf, who joined the show during season four, which is one of those where I'm like, well, this is, would have been the good time to make a, a revised Major Kira wearing her slightly different uniform because they did Worf and they also made the uh, Captain Sisko wearing the same style of uniform. Um, they did update his bandolier to have 
the proper style of the uh, emblems on it. Um, of course, one of the big things would have been is that that particular emblem did change later on when he joined the House of Martok, but that's nitpicking. And of course, the uh, the longer hair, which was actually originally done for the Star Trek Generations sculpts, and so they, they that was basically just a reuse. Uh, but everything else about this figure was actually a completely original sculpting. Um, next main character, the last of the main characters, really, was Quark. Uh, they only ever made the one Quark, so it means that a lot of customizers have to do variations on his outfits, because, I mean, he wore dozens of different outfits throughout the run of the show. Um... This is the one you see him wear the most, probably, especially during that first season. Uh, I've always been suspicious that they probably only, that first season, they probably only had the budget to make him about three or four different costumes, and so they just rotated them every episode. Uh, but then later on, he had many, many more, and so a lot of customizers have made variations on that in order to get them through. I, I did forget one other character in a Starfleet uniform, but again, that's Q. Which, the thing about this one, it was literally, it's the exact same sculpt as the uh, Cisco body, down to the hands and the way that the cuffs are around the sleeves, just with the John Delancey head put on there. Now, the rest of the characters... Oh, oh, one more main character, Jake Sisko. This was how Jake looked mainly during Season 1. Uh, which, if I grab... Let me grab that Sisko back. Was about the only time that Jake was actually slightly shorter than Captain Sisko. Because uh, Sirach, who played... Sirach Lofton, who played... Jake, he shot up. I, I want to say during season two, he was probably about equal with uh, Cisco, but by season three, he was definitely an inch taller, and he just kept getting taller and taller. And it's one of those again when they were working on the updated figures for Worf and Cisco later on. I always kind of wish that they had done a slightly older like about season four season five jake where he would be taller and an outfit that's not quite so child jumpsuit like um but speaking of dads and sons so we've got rom which i, I do lo love the sculpt of this figure i the only thing that's always kind of bugged me is the way that the head is nestled in with the jacket, it, it just it kind of makes it... Because if you look at Cork, his head actually sticks... His, he's, he's got a neck is the big thing. For some reason, they didn't give Rom a neck. But otherwise, I really do like the jacket. The pants are great. Um, a lot of people use this to make their own versions of him later on when he's the technician, which I've got mine. And I'll show you that here in just a few moments. Uh, just keeping in Quark's bar, they made a Lita, the Dabo girl, um, which her, she's got this, okay, fell off again. It, this is one of the things that they did a lot later on in the series. There, there's two things that I hated about these, these what they were doing and later on, because let me see, this was 97, yeah. Is that they removed points of articulation? You see, this, she's she moves at the waist, the hips. She's only moves at the shoulders, and then her neck turns. But of course, it's this awkward posing. They've got these little bits that are supposed to use the pegs to stick in at the back of the hips, right above her butt. Never really worked out real well. A lot of people they just hot glue them or super glue them on in order to keep them in place. Uh, of course, the other thing, she came with a ridiculously tiny Dabo will. Uh, 
what you would think. Come on, why don't have her at least come with a decent sized Dabo wheel? Um, and then one last patron of Quirk's Bar, which was part of the first series, was Morton. Uh, if you're not familiar with the show, you probably don't realize that Morn being an anagram of Norm, a joke from uh, Cheers, the regular p- patron of the bar. Uh, and also is the idea that he's supposed to be super talkative, but during the entire seven year run of the show, he never, we, we never hear him say a word. Um, and I, I do love the moment in the uh, season seven episode, Who Mourns for Morn, when Quirk's yelling at him, demanding an explanation. And then right as he's about to open his mouth to start explaining, Quirk yells, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Um, this is just a fun sculpt. Of course, the thing about this is because of the fact that the way that the, the makeup was done for the character, he does have a head that turns, but it results in him doing this, which I just find hilarious. Uh, so you don't typically move his head around much. Now, next is Garrick. Uh, he was one of the later figures that they made. Um, of course, this one technically has a slight bit of customization going on because up here on the sleeves, this was all brown, just like the jacket color. The only place where it was that maroonish orange color was around here, and so I did have to uh, paint these for my own satisfaction. And this one thing about this figure that's always kind of bugged me is the way his legs are real close together at the hips and then splay out. It's just an awkward stance. And I, I'm like, why couldn't they have just made his body a little wider through this section? Other than that, it's a very good sculpt. And the lightness of the head is really good. Of course, the fact that during the entire run of Playmates, they only ever made three Cardassian figures uh, made, made it difficult for those of us who are customizers because that's the only options we've got. Now the last... Oh, before I move on, I forgot with... <laughs> should have shown you this with uh, Nog, or with Rom, is the Nog minifigure that he came with, which, yes, Nog was short. Nog was never this short. It's it's almost insulting. Um, and, of course, the thing that always bugged me about this the most is the fact that he's got his hand up like he's he needs for somebody to hold his hand so he can go to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> I have actually taken, and I took and made a, a copy of this head and upscaled it and i'll show you that in just a moment once we get to the custom figures i've made but this is the last of the regular line of figures that they made was a keiko o'brien uh now the funny thing is a lot of people accuse this one of having variants and it kind of does kind of doesn't because this vest that she's supposed to be wearing and in fact you can actually see it on the back of mine better has a slightly goldish color to it. And the reason that people claim that there are variants of this one is that some of them got more gold paint than others. Mine, if especially on the front, if we kind of hold it back, it looks a little more black. But I, it's, I don't really consider it to be a paint variant. I think it's more of an accident that happened. Uh, again, this one, they didn't put the... Uh, ability to turn the arms up here at the uh, shoulders. They can only do this. But they did actually make the legs where they could turn. Which was something that they started doing with the Voyager figures. So they took away one point of articulation and moved it somewhere else. I need to clean. Other than that, it's an okay sculpt of Keiko. The hair, it's fine. Uh, I really wish they had done something to make the headband look differentiated. 
but it works as a, as a figure. Now, the two customs I'll be showing you today, first is Technician ROM, which this is a ROM head put on an Odo body and painted the green and gray colors for a technician. Uh, real simple, nothing much to it. And then the last one, like I said, I took that minifigure of Rom, of Nog, and I upscaled it so that I could make this. This is Nog in his cadet uniform, which is a cadet crusher. It's the exact same one. The shoulders are even the same red. I just had to paint it all with the uh, gray, added the little pockets there on the hips there but also painted the back of his uh, headdress the cadet red to match but I've actually always been since I made this I'm quite happy with how that sculpt turned out and I'll grab actually grab the you know, ROM figure you can see it's not quite technically as short as it probably should be but it's a height that I'm happy with. It doesn't make him too short or too tall. And it fits in line. And I'll, uh, since you do see him with O'Brien a lot, again, he's just only a little bit shorter than O'Brien. And instead of being way down here, which I've seen a lot of people use the uh, <coughs> Galoob three and a half inch figures to make a nog and it works it always looks a little bit off scale to me but it does work um so that is the deep space nine figures the main group of them and a few customs and i'll show you some more of those later on until next time